Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too, and on today's video we take a look at a ultra budget gaming mouse which may tick a lot of boxes for you and is possibly all that you need. So this is the Logitech G203 LightSync ARGB. This is a six button gaming mouse and it comes in at a spectacularly good price quite often. Not all the time. So I'll get that out of the way first of all. There will be affiliated links in the video description so you can check out the pricing near you. Now the affiliated links will generate a small commission for us if you do decide to purchase one. So I just wanted to make you clear of that. This mouse itself actually was donated to us for review purposes by Dave Aiken. Thank you very much, Dave. And we're gonna be taking a look at it today. So let's go through, first of all, and take a look at some of the specifications. So this, as I said, is a six button mouse. It's got a height of 117 millimeters, a width of 62 millimeters, a depth of 38 millimeters. It has a 1.2 millimeter liftoff distance, and it comes with a 2.1 meter USB cable. When it comes to the actual sensor, so this is using Logitech's 1855 sensor, which is capable of a DPI between 200 and 8,000 DPI, which I think for most people is gonna be more than enough. I don't know about you, but me personally, I generally tend to have most of my mice set to somewhere around the 1600 to 2000 DPI, which works pretty well in most instances. Let me know in the comments what you've got your set to. The sensor on this one, it's actually got a very consistent feeling to it. So whether you're moving at very low speeds or you're tracking very quickly, it seems to have a very consistent feel to it, which makes for a slightly more confident gaming experience. Or if you're using it for productivity tasks, web browsing, that sort of thing, you know that your movements are gonna to correlate to what you see on the screen and the clicks are gonna be very responsive. The mouse itself, is uh, plastic predominantly as you'd expect it isn't a particularly lightweight mouse this comes in at around about 85 grams and is i've got to say actually pretty much built like a tank giving it a good squeeze on the side there's no movement in the plastics whatsoever and when it comes to the plastics it's actually quite a nice finish to it with this kind of satin matte finish which i actually quite prefer there's also four colors available of this. So if you want to, you can go for the black version. There's a white version, a blue version, and a lilac version. So depending on obviously availability and pricing, you may choose one of those instead. The white one, I think predominantly these days is probably gonna be very popular. So let's do a quick tour of the mouse and see what it's all about. So the cable, like I said, USB type A cable, 2.1 meters in length, which is actually a little bit longer than you get with some. So if you've got your PC tower slightly further away, Shouldn't be any problem at all to get that plugged in. And actually the cable is extremely thin and has a nice rubberized coating on it and doesn't appear to scag or catch on any surfaces. So that's really nice. You do find with some of the uh, slightly cheaper mice on the market, ones that have braided cables, they tend to snag up all over the place on most surfaces. So it's actually quite nice and refreshing to have a cable which doesn't want to get snagged up. The actual design of it, is pretty much ambidextrous, although it is really intended for right-handers, being the fact that you've got the two forward and back buttons on the side there, which can be programmed for alternate things. But in terms of the actual shape, I actually quite like it. It's quite a shallow design, the actual hump on the top, and it's pretty suited to most types of grips, and especially some of those hybrid grips, which people tend to use. The actual construction, like I said, very, very good indeed. You've also got a cable relief strain there on the front, so prevent the cable getting damaged through months and years of use. You've also got two mouse buttons on the front with a very nice tactile click to them. The middle mouse button is very similar, although slightly more muted, but does actually feel quite tactile. The wheel itself, really nice rubberized coating on it, and actually there's 24 segments for a full rotation, and the actual rotation does feel very defined. It's not overly notchy, but you definitely know when you've moved it a little bit, so that's pretty nice. You also got above that a DPI selection button. You can program onboard DPI settings, up to four of them, and also you can reprogram this DPI button to a DPI shift button. So that meaning if you're, say for instance, you've got it set to 2000 DPI as your standard for moving around, and you wanna go into like a sniper type mode or get some better resolution, then you can press and hold that button and then it will go into the lower setting. We'll show you that later in the software. You can set it down to like 400 or something or 800 just to give you a little bit more accuracy for those snipe shots. Like I said, on the side of the mouse, you've got some nice buttons there. Those are actually quite clicky as well. 
although they are a little bit on the small side, but for me personally, as possibly if you've watched this channel before, you'll know I'm left-handed, and I tend to use my ring finger to do the forward and back, and actually it feels quite nice, although I think I would have preferred them to be slightly further forward, possibly, because it is actually not the longest of mice, but certainly it's pretty decent. If you've got smaller hands or medium-sized hands, you're gonna find this is perfect. I think if you've got very large hands, you may find this a little bit on the small side. On the other side of the mouse, nothing at all, but there is a little bit of a texture there. It is quite smooth, but also a little bit grippy as well. So yeah, it's not completely shiny. And actually the top section where your palm would rest is actually considerably shinier than the side. So yeah, there is a, a nice bit of grip there. Again, depending on your grip style, you may prefer that, you may not. Looking at the bottom, so we've got five PTFE feet. So two at the front, two at the back, and one surrounding the actual sensor. Like I said, this is using Logitech's own 1855 sensor on there, which gives you DPIs between 200 and 8,000 DPI. So yeah, pretty nice. One downside of this, if you're someone who likes modifying your mice and you want to change out the switches, you will need to get a heat gun or something to actually remove the PTFE feet to prevent damaging them. Uh, if you take them off just using like a scalpel or something, they're gonna bend and flex and it's not gonna be great, not gonna be very smooth when you put them back on. But certainly if you want to take it apart, you will need to remove those feet. Now going back to what I said a little bit earlier on in the video about this being a fantastic value for money mouse. Now this is gonna be dependent on the price. Now we have seen this here in the UK as low as just under 13 pounds, yes, one three, in which case this is an absolute no brainer. It is a very high quality mouse, very well built, great software and all that kind of stuff. So for 13 pounds, it's extremely hard to argue with that price. At its normal retail price, which is in the region of about 30 pounds, I think the choice becomes a little bit more difficult because there is a lot of competition on the market, especially for some of those slightly off-brand items, Chinese wholesalers, AliExpress, etc., where you can get an extremely high-end sensor into a mouse, although potentially they may lack the design and build quality. Like I said earlier, there will be affiliated links in the video description if you want to help out the channel and help support what we do here at Mike's Unboxing. All those links will generate a very small commission. So that's enough of taking a look at the mouse. Let's take a look at the software and see what you can do. And there's actually a little bit of a trick up this one's sleeve. So here we are on the Windows desktop and we'll open up the Logitech G Hub suite. So if you want to install the software for this, you certainly can do. You don't need to, that has got actually an onboard memory so you can store your settings on there. When you open up for the first time, you're greeted with this. So it says it's connected by USB. There's a picture of the mouse itself. And you've got two main options here. So you've got the onboard memory mode on or off. So if you want to store your settings and you're maybe using it on another computer, you can store it in the onboard memory. And also we've got an option here, which is one of the new tricks up its sleeve. So it actually supports dynamic lighting for Windows, which is a new feature within Windows 11, which can help to synchronize addressable RGB and RGB devices on your computer. So you can turn that on or off if you wish to, if you want to use dynamic lighting. This is actually a really nice step in the right direction and I wish more companies would do this. To go into the software more, Click on the mouse itself and we've got some options here. So we go to the first one. So we've got options for sensitivity or your DPI. And currently we've got it set to 400, 800, 1800 and 3200. 1800 is my preferred speed. That is what I'm gonna be leaving it at. And again, if you want to, you can set your shift speed. Currently the shift speed is set to 400. Also you've got the report rate or your frequency that the USB polls. So 1000 Hertz is the default. You can always choose 500, 250 and 125 if you've got applications which don't support such high polling rates. You can as well restore the default settings should you wish to. Moving down, so we've got the button assignment. So you can go in and choose whatever you want to do. Middle click, right click, etc. All the usual kind of stuff there. So that's pretty good. And also you can choose keys, actions, macros and to control system features. Then the last one is the light sync, which is basically where this gets its name from. So this you can control the RGB. So you've got the option for presets. You've got the various presets there. So oft, fixed, cycle, breathing, color wave, color blend, screen sampler, and a audio visualizer. That might be quite nice for some people. Also, you can choose which way it cycles, also the rate it cycles, and also your mouse brightness level. Next, you can go to freestyle, so you can choose your own modes. And as you can see here, I've actually set this up for a little bit of uh, United Kingdom going on here. So we've got the red, white, and blue of the United Kingdom flag, the Union Jack. So you can choose to do that. You can do whatever you want. Just click on one of these, choose a color, and that will set it. 
So that's pretty nice. And also you can do selecting a color from here, choose from any of the predefined ones, etc., etc. You also got freestyles you can add, and also you've got animations. So you can set some animations. So ocean wave, vertical, all that kind of stuff. So I think most people just go into here and choose either a static color or set it to colorway, whatever you want to do. Again, you don't have to do any of that if you don't want to. You can just save it to the onboard and it will just do its own thing without the need for the software. The software, for those who are wondering, is around about 200 megabytes. So not a massively overweight piece of software. And of course, like I said previously, you can go in and use the dynamic lighting should you wish to. So if you go into personalization on your Windows 11 device, choose dynamic lighting and you can choose to turn that on or off, in which case you can control all of your compatible devices within the dynamic lighting application. In terms of usability and for gaming purposes, I've tested this with a few games, Fortnite and also CS2, both of which absolutely fine, no problems at all. Like I said, very consistent feel whether you're whipping around very quickly or whether you're doing small movements for sniper movements or whatever it is, or just crouching around. It's absolutely fine for that. The clicks are the only thing which I think for me personally are a little bit on the loud side. The left and right mouse buttons are a little bit too clicky for my liking. And if you're in a room where there's other people, it may be a little bit distracting. Although if you're a gamer, you've probably got a clacky keyboard. So we're just gonna drown this out somewhat. I have actually used this in the mouse accuracy test as well. And you can see the results on the screen now has probably been flying by. It's actually not too bad. Once you get used to it, it does feel very natural. I've been recently using considerably lighter mice, around about the kind of 60 grams mark. And it is a noticeable difference. This is, like I said, getting on for about 85 grams. So it is a little bit heavier, but it is built like an absolute tank. So maybe if you're a parent and you're buying your kids their first gaming computer and you're looking for a mouse which is going to be almost indestructible and isn't going to cost a fortune, I think this one is definitely on the list of ones you should be looking at. Pros for this one, I would say definitely you've got the fact it feels like it's really, really well built, so it's going to last. Also, the glide feet glide very nicely indeed, very smooth on surfaces. You've also got that really consistent sensor, which is great whether you're moving fast or slow. And best of all, it's cheap at times. Quite often there are deals on, on Amazon and other places as well, where this goes for as little as £13, and potentially it might even get cheaper than that, who knows. Like I said, there will be affiliated links in the video description if you want to check this out and get more information and pricing local to you. Overall, I think if it's on offer, definitely worth a look. If it's at a normal retail price, around about 25, 30, 35 pounds, there's definitely other options on the market which you should certainly take a look at. But I think overall, in terms of build quality, the accuracy, and the actual overall product itself, I think this is really, really good. So anyway, there you go. That's been the Logitech G202 LightSync RGB. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.